The commitment ceremony today was the event to kick off Pride Week. I wonder what the first Penn State students and professors would have thought about a week set aside to celebrate homosexuality. I've also wondered why I use the word pride in such weeks, when it is referring to a lifestyle that shortens the lives of the male participants by up to 20 years. Those involved in the lifestyle have increased incidences of substance abuse, eating, and psychological disorders. What homosexual activists are asking is to radically change the definition of marriage. You are telling my daughters that they will not be essential to the family, that two men can replace them. Or it could be two women telling my son that he will not be essential to a family. It hurts everyone, regardless of ideology or background. It is a dangerous thing to do. If marriage is redefined to become merely an emotional relationship of love and companionship, as homosexual advocates advocate, where do we draw the line? How do we confine marriage to only two people? Why not polygamy or group marriage? There is no way to prevent other unique marital arrangements once marriage is redefined initially. There is no civil right, no civil right, to intentionally subject children to fatherless or motherless homes in order to fulfill adult desire. If we allow homosexuals to marry to honor their, quote, civil rights and not discriminate against them, how would we arbitrarily protest the attempt of, of a polygamist to marry more than one wife? We couldn't do it. Or how about a father to marry his daughter? Or a group of people to marry? There's no limit to, to the redefinition. Homosexual marriage intentionally creates motherless and fatherless families, denying the needs of children. Marriage is a common good, not a special interest. Every American benefits from healthy marriages. When children do not have a married mother and father, all Americans pay the price in social disorder and human suffering.